Good afternoon, everyone. Mayor Kohlberg here, and today I'm at Dyke B. Now, this is right behind the River Grove campground, and I'm with Dagan Blakely, who is a river engineer with Kerwood, Liddell, and Associates. And thanks for joining me today, and I've got a few questions I hope you can help us out with. So, we know our consultants are out in the process of designing for our the community. So, therefore, can you explain the process? What are the, some of the key factors that you consider while doing this? Sure. So one of the first things we want to look at is where in the community are flood impacts happening. And we're quite fortunate that the province of Alberta has just wrapped up their flood inundation study. So we can use that information to identify locations where we need dikes. And then in locations where we have existing dikes, like Dike B here already, we can use the information to determine how much higher the dike would need to be to be able to meet the design flood elevation that we want. And just a note, as we're raising the dikes, we'll also need to widen them to make sure that the dike is stable and as well that there's room for emergency vehicles to drive on and bring additional fill if we get a flood event higher than our design flood event. So once we've figured out the locations of the dikes and the height, we can start to look at the footprint area. And as well, we're going to come out and start doing some geotechnical investigation on the dikes to try to figure out what soils are located in the dikes and the ground below. And that'll inform how we can design the dike section. So once we have a little bit more information pulled together on the design, then we can go to the regulatory application stage and get approval to build the dikes because they are located so close to the river and in the provincial flood hazard area. Well, that, that's super information because again, that's something that we all need to understand that there is a lot of processes involved. So what, why do you guys drill so many of these boreholes and, and how do you choose the locations? Because as I walked up here, I saw one of those, and I'm just trying to figure out how do you determine that. So what we're, we're looking for is we want to have enough boreholes to get enough information so it's representative of the whole footprint where we're putting the dike. And in areas like Drumheller, where the materials have been deposited by the river, they can be quite variable. So what are the next steps? What, where do we go from here? So as we move through the design process, the next step will be to zoom in a little bit closer and start to look at impacts to things like utilities, adjacent properties, um, stormwater drainage, all those little details that come together in um, building the dike footprint. So we'll be looking at that through the next several weeks. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're busy. I know you have a lot on the go, but it, it just really helps the community understand that we are continuing to move forward. There just is a lot yeah. involved to get there. So thanks so much. Thanks for taking Thank the time. You. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We will keep you informed. We will continue to give you information. So keep watching Drumheller Alert. And thanks and have a great day. Take care.